Sure, you could, be, looks you could be. You could be. They could be adding to the problem, and you know the internet and social media actually enhances those issues. Where now, in a bunch of different disputes, lawyers send out a nasty letter saying, you know, you you shouldn't have done this. You're in the wrong standard legal jargon, and then the people who got it say. What do you, you know, this is, your claim is ridiculous. They post it on the internet, tell everybody about it, and it actually backfires on the company that was making the complaint because the company, you know, other company got a lot more attention. There was a trademark case last year. Uh, a kid, a high school or college kid, created a small clothing line called South Butt that was a, a parody of North Face outdoor gear. And North Face sent them a letter, and this kid took it public, basically, and his, he got sued, but they settled it, and he's still using the name. And nobody would have ever heard of this brand if North Face had not sent him a nasty letter. You know? And now uh, there were tons of media articles written about it. He's got thousands of fans on Facebook, and I'm sure he's done a lot more business than he ever would have done because they contacted him, and he played it in the right way in the public um, that backfired on North Face. But if you're saying... Did, did you use the word parody in that I did. explanation? But see, Mad Magazine is based on that. And, and the things that they've copied over the years, you know, go after everybody. And yet, because of the word parody, it's obvious is what they're doing. They're making fun or they're playing off of it. Sure. Day. And so, and some of the things they play with Disney, sure. Disney doesn't even want that. But they're not, surface. they're not, um, selling something that really competes with Disney. I mean, there, you know, whereas the apparel that was a parody of North Face is still apparel, so it's directly competing still with North Face. And an image that uses Mickey Mouse would still be in some way competing with the prints and the artwork and the other things that Disney does. Um, that's at least one distinction there. I'm sure Mad Magazine got threatened for lawsuits many times, but I'm sure, right, that Nobody probably really wanted to take it uh, far enough because, it, you know, it's clearly a parody when you're reading Mad, Mad, Mad Magazine. Has the introduction of the internet really escalated these situations? Because it would take a long time for something to work its way to a parent company. Today, it's overnight. That's right. And nothing goes on. On the one hand, nothing goes unnoticed. Right? They have special, you can be sure whatever the software is that tracks for copying images and stuff, they have that software, right? They know when somebody's copied their images. They're, they're analyzing the pixels and these kind of things. I mean, just how in Flickr and some of these things they can identify faces, you know. Um, so they're using the technologies to fight it, and everything happens quickly. And, uh, and the other aspect is that it's so much easier and cheaper to copy anything. You know, it used to be before, if somebody, if somebody wanted to copy a painting that was hanging in a gallery, they had to go to the gallery, take a perfect photo of it, you know, and make a beautiful print of it and copy it. And now, if the artist has a website, they can just right-click on it, save it, blow it up, send it on their computer to the Kinko's and print it out on a beautiful piece of paper, you know, and, and they didn't even have to get up out of their computer chair or spend more than $20. You use the resolution? Yeah, you cannot do that. Yeah, you, you have to have the resolution. You cannot blow a small image like that. It would be impossible. Okay, it would but be disgusting. yeah, but it's a lot easier. I mean, there might be high quality resolution on on some websites um, or other reasons. It still or is a lot easier than it used to be. Or you could just keep it on your website. You could take it and put it on your website or send it via email. You don't even have to. Right, you don't need a huge print, print, maybe. Right. It's or, only or you take a digital photo of it, you know, right. and, and, and you replicate it that way, which is a lot less expensive and uh, time consuming than it, taking an a, 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 uh, old photo and blowing it up and, and making it high quality that way. So, um, no, these are great questions. And you can see intellectual property is everywhere, it's at the core of what artists do. And, um, the first step is to really think about identifying that intellectual property and uh, notifying other people about it. And then, you know, thinking about should I register some of these things? 
definitely think about, do I need to go back and look at some old contracts that I'm working under and, and addressing intellectual property issues that could come? Certainly future contracts, I would urge you to address intellectual property issues in the contracts. Um, Eric, I have a question about uh, using attorneys versus legal Zoom or, you know, um, because a lot of people want to go online and, and use a contract that maybe LegalZoom or some yeah. other, you know, has that. And, you know, me, I've always gone to attorneys for anything because I feel that they know more than I do about what should be in it or at taking something that you've been given and having your attorney take a look at it. What are your thoughts in, in terms of the art world? Well, it's hard not to be biased, obviously, having yeah, gone to law school still, and but, practicing yeah. law. But, um, I, I will tell you, there are services you can use. There are free samples on the web, on the web of, of almost anything, you know. Um, sometimes that's okay. Sometimes, you know, most of the time I would advise against that. Some simple things like a non-disclosure agreement, you know, that's one page. You can find some pretty good templates on the internet and right. customize them mm -hmm. and, and make that your own. You know, a release if you're like... If you're a photographer and you're taking pictures mm -hmm. of, of people, but you want to be able to use and, and, and sell those, a general release, that, that is pretty straightforward. But if you're talking about a negotiated contract between two people that has terms of termination, in terms right. of payment, in terms of who controls these things, right. a template is really not going to help you. And really, I'd almost say that Worse than having no contract is worse is having an agreement that doesn't make sense and then you don't even understand what it says, um, which is a big problem. A lot of these websites that have terms of use, they're copied from other websites and they don't, you know, they don't even always make sense. Um, so I, I would urge, you know, urge caution and urge trying to find an attorney that can fit within your budget that. It's like insurance for your work, for the project. If you do it without taking these steps, you really, it's like building a house on a foundation of mud instead of on a foundation of cement. You might be okay if it's on mud, but you never know if there's gonna be a hurricane. And if there is a hurricane, you'd much rather be on a real foundation than on a mud foundation. So. No, I'm, I'm moving towards the finish, so it's fine. Just quickly, uh, uh, tonight.com is really good at, at taking your photo and searching for a, a copy on the web. Sorry, okay. what site is that? Tinye.com. Tin, T-I-N-E-Y-E? -E? Yeah, okay. I mean, it's just scary. You know, five seconds later, it'll show you. It's really good. Uh, is that free or paid? Yeah, it's free. Okay. Um, the, 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 uh, you hear the word parody thrown around a lot, and, and my understanding over the years is, is become sort of a, um, it has a really loose definition almost to the point of, um, if, if you make a painting of just about anything, it's parody. And I, I'm really fuzzy on the whole concept of where, you know, Warhol soup cans would have originally been parody. Um, you know, but where do you, where is this line? Where you're crossing. Well, it's funny because I wanted to put Warhol soup cans in my presentation as some of the background, and then I was like, hey, I wasn't sure which one to use because there's a variety, and I ended up not going with it. But uh, <laughs> um, parody, you know, part of the problem is that there's like parody just in the cultural sense of the word. Yeah, that's a parody. It's making a comment on something, uh -huh. and then there's parody in the legal sense of the word. Word, which has actual standards, and the standards are slightly are different for trademarks uh -huh. versus copyrights. And I, frankly, I, I can't, I don't know the details well enough about legal definition of a parody to discuss it right now. But um, it's it really has to be making a statement with a purpose. You know, in so, to some extent, it overlaps with free speech issues as well. Sometimes where you're making a statement about something. But it is, e I, I understand your point, it is le easy to label anything that's sort of a derivative as a parody, but just because it's a parody doesn't mean it's okay. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. There's a, there was a trademark case a year or two ago. A company made dog treats called Chewy Vuitton. <laughs> a cute, creative name. Louis Vuitton, to my knowledge, has never made dog treats. Maybe they make some really expensive, fancy, small dog 
don't, I don't know, but they sued them for trademark infringement and they were successful, I believe, um, in part because of the fame of the brand, uh, not, you know, again, not necessarily because the products are directly competing, but because the Louis Vuitton brand is so well known um, and does reach a, a variety of products that they were able to stop the dog treat uh, maker from using that name, even though the name is, as you say, a parody in a pop culture sense, it wasn't held to be a legal parody enough to give them, you know, a safeguard under the law. I, I'm sort of laughing because the reason I had to use Tim I was I was searching for this photo of a, a nun praying with a rosary instead of a root at the end of the, at the end of the, the rosary was a Louis Vuitton logo. Uh -huh. <laughs> So that would have really brought the whole presentation yeah. full circle. <laughs> you can email me that for next time, and I'll add it to my slides. Because <laughs> we are uh, basically at the at the end here. Um, what I want to leave you with is intellectual property is very important to all types of artwork, regardless of the format, regardless of how small or big or how valuable financially. Um, and if there's anything you take home, it's to please identify what you do that's intellectual property. Think about taking steps to protect it and maybe even register it. And I think if you just start out by, you know, you say, well, this is kind of overwhelming. You just start out and say, I'm going to set aside 30 minutes, kind of make a list of what types of intellectual property I might have, and then asterisk next to the ones that are the most important that maybe I should really consider whether it's worth the, the, the fees to go ahead and register and protect and always, of course, use um, the notices that we talked about. So um, I will take a few more questions if there are and then afterwards we can let everybody go and I'll stick around for more questions as well. Um, um, after